Well, hello everyone. It's Rebecca with Hands and Feet Homestead. Welcome back to the channel. Today I was going to take you along as I up pot my tomatoes and my peppers and show you how we separate our seedlings. And then I was going to show you our cold frame and show you how we've been using that to raise our plant starts, uh, which is a really great alternative to a greenhouse. I also wanted to just give you some updates on what's going on. Um, we got our Freedom Rangers in recently, and right now they're about two weeks old, um, and they are doing really great. They are so cute. We are really enjoying the Freedom Rangers um, so far in comparison to the Cornish Crosses. The kids have really been enjoying them too. And we got 102 of them, and my goal was to sell half, and I sold almost all of them so far, just to make up some of the cost difference to us. We also have been keeping our incubators loaded up with eggs, and hatching out Rhode Island red chicks, and selling those, and that's been going really well, just to help with offsetting the cost of feed and things like that. And they are so cute, the little chicks, that's been a really fun project for the kids as well. Then we also have our Cornish Crosses. Um, these are our standard meat birds that we always raise every year. They're about four weeks old here and they're enjoying a little bit of the sunshine since it has been a very cold spring so far. They're doing really well and we're going to be moving them over to the bigger tractor uh, in a couple days. We have been busy getting some prep work done. We got our potato bed all tilled up and then we went ahead and just raked it all out to get the ground all level. So we'll be planting potatoes coming up pretty soon and I've just been working on trying to clear up the beds, getting them ready to be planted with the new things this year. Kids have been enjoying playing in the, playing in the dirt with just some containers and shovels. It's been a lot of fun to get outside on some nicer days. And my greenhouse has been a, just a complete mess. It's just been jam-packed full of stuff just being used as a storage shed. So I finally got everything cleared out and now I can actually walk in there. And that's where I had my garlic planted. So now it's all cleared out and I can actually use it as a functioning greenhouse. <laughs> The garlic is doing really well so far. A couple weeks back I went and just top dressed it with some of our compost here. And here's an updated video of those and they're growing really well and looking really good. So I'm excited to get some, hopefully some good garlic this year. And now here I'm going to just take you along with me as I up pot all of my tomatoes and peppers, show you how we do that. And then also the little trick to separate seedlings so you can double your plants. Uh, so the other day I just dumped in some um, organic potting soil, some potting mix into my wheelbarrow here and then I just added some amendments to it. I added a little bit of bone meal and a little bit of um, blood meal and I added in some uh, bagged worm castings that I had. They weren't from our worms, but I had some left over from last year. And I just kind of mixed it all into the wheelbarrow. I didn't really measure anything. I uh, just kind of eyeballed it. But I would say err on the side of less so that you don't burn your plants. You're not going to burn it with, um, with the worm castings. You can't burn it. But if you give it too much of the other stuff, you, you could potentially hurt your plants. So, um, so yeah, that's all. That's all what this is here. So I just have some left in here, so I'll get those started. These are from Bootstrap Farmer, um, just like the trays in my last video. I showed how we start our seeds and the grow light setup, and um, I talked about a little bit about these trays that I really like. But these are really nice. These are really sturdy, and they hold these um, cups, which are also like a really nice hard plastic that aren't going to crack very easily. Um, and you can use them over and over, um, but they, they hold up really well and they fit in here really nice so your plants aren't falling over when you're trying to move them. Um, and so yeah, I really like these a lot, so that's what I'm going to be putting them in. So let's get started. So I have one of these, I don't, I don't really know what this is actually, but <laughs> um, it's perfect for just kind of helping me, it's perfect for helping me just get in the side here and um, just kind of help wiggle out. So I always kind of just 
go like that a little bit just to loosen it and then this helps you just kind of scoop them out a little bit so there you go we have our tomato plant so we have two plants in there so I'll just show you what I do just kind of gently that just to kind of loosen it and then you're able to don't rip the roots but just kind of jiggle it and I kind of spin them around like that and they'll just come apart like that so there you go now you have two plants that were in the one cell so go ahead and put those in there then I start by putting a little bit of dirt in the bottom of this uh, container and then I'm just gonna pop it in there and I'm gonna plant these very deep because tomatoes are one of those plants that do benefit from being planted very deep because um, if you can see closely I don't know if you can see this the camera is having a hard time focusing but if you can see it there's little tiny hairs you can see coming off of the stem here and basically if you bury it in dirt all those will turn into little roots and so it'll just help increase the um, the root structure of the plant by by uh, burying it deep so we're gonna go ahead and try to bury it up to here and there <clears throat> so I just put a little bit of dirt in there and then I can pop the little plant in and get it nice and deep and then just fill it up with a little bit more dirt around the edge just pack it gently around the sides of it there we go like that and now it's ready to go I could even go a little deeper put a little more dirt around there there, there we have it I am going to plant the rest of these in these just red solo cups here. I've been using these over and over again, so this is a little hack for you. You can get a huge bag of these, which I need to go and get more um, from Costco for not that much money, but you can use these over and over and over again. Just drill some holes down on the bottom. These make really great planters for tomatoes because um, I'm going to be putting the peppers in those little ones. They don't grow quite as fast, um, so those will be great, but tomatoes seem to grow really fast, so having a little bit bigger of a container is really nice. Plus, I am going to be um, trying to sell these, so I don't want to give away my really nice containers, so these will be good. I can just sell them in these, and that'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and just transplant all the tomatoes into here now. We'll get going these cups aren't going to fit in that those tray holders I was talking about but this is also a really nice uh, other kind of tray to have one with holes on the bottom so when you put all these on here you can water and you won't worry about it getting waterlogged and up and overflowing with water <laughs> it'll drain through the holes on the bottom so I'll link those below too if you want to uh, check those out Finally got all the tomatoes and peppers all transplanted and I have them all here in the greenhouse and I put these little covers over them because it is supposed to get down to 30 tonight and as I said that that side is open it'll probably be fine in here I don't think it would get to freezing but just in case I'm putting those on top just to protect them and so those are really handy to have and I got all the everything else all up potted 
and some more over there. So yeah, that is all done now. I'm happy that's done, and um, I am going to be setting up a, a shelving unit here. I just bought one from Costco the other day to put right here, and then I'll be able to put all of these things on top of the shelf so they're not scattered all over the floor. Um, this is the first time I've really used this greenhouse as a greenhouse. <laughs> um, it's basically just been a storage shed in the back, but at this point I have really outgrown my cold frame. Um, I have always have used that um, up until this point for raising all of my starts and um, when I up pot everything I put it in there. Um, so I'll go ahead and show that to you, but um, so that's a good alternative if you don't have a greenhouse and you have, it'll hold a lot of, of starts. but. I am doing more this year and then I am selling some so I am a little bit pressed for space in there. So I'm just going to be using this now. I can go ahead and show you that. Okay, I'm here out at the cold frame now. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly show this to you. This is a really good option if um, you don't have a greenhouse. Greenhouses are kind of pretty expensive and it takes a lot of time to build sometimes and um, this is something that we've been using for four years or so now um, it's quick to make you can make it in you know an afternoon and it really does hold a lot of plants so you can um, put all of like once you up pot all of your tomatoes and peppers um, you can go ahead and just put them in here and then in April, around mid-April to about the third week of April, so about right now, <laughs> is when I usually will start my um, zucchinis and squash and some pumpkins and watermelons and things like that. Um, and cucumbers too. Um, I'll usually just direct sow those into um, little pots like um, something like this and I'll just direct sow um, a, a seed into there and I'll just start them in my cold frame. Um, that's usually what I do every year. Uh, so this is a really really good option if um, you don't have a greenhouse and it'll allow you to start a few more things early um, rather than waiting to just direct sow your cucumbers and stuff into the garden. So it's just basically it's an 8 by Four. It's kind of the size of a standard raised bed and it's angled up towards the top there and then we just put some a double layer of plastic down um, and attached it onto these um, pieces of wood here so that you can roll this up so if you only want it cracked a little bit you can do that or if you want it you know Depending on how warm of a day it is, you can adjust how much you want exposed, or of course you can open it all the way like that. Another really cool thing about the cold frame versus a greenhouse is your plants are going to be ready to go into your garden. You're not going to have to worry about hardening them off or anything like that because you're opening it every day. It's getting the direct sunlight and um, getting the wind blowing on it so so your plants are going to be even stronger and ready to go and used to all the elements so that is um, one plus of using the cold frame uh, it's worked great for us for four years um, I usually have this thing completely full of plants right now and um, honestly I've just kind of outgrown this size this is a really big size and it will hold a lot but um, I keep growing more each year and then I am also trying to sell some as well. So we'll see what happens with that, but um, that's why I have everything I'm just keeping in the greenhouse. That's the only reason why I'm not using this, but. So we just have a little heat lamp in the back here. It's the same kind of heat lamp that you would use for just baby chicks. Um, and it's attached to a sensor that controls um, the temperature. So we have it set at 55 degrees, so whenever the temperature dips down below 55 degrees, then it signals for the heat lamp to kick on. So it's not on during the day, it's not on all the time, only when it gets below 55 degrees. And that way you have no worry of this area, even on really cold nights, if you have really weird, weirdly cold nights during the spring, um, I've never had a problem with it not 
um, keeping it above freezing and protecting my plants. So it's such a, it's lower to the ground and then you have the double plastic over the top. So it really does keep the heat in really well. I also have this up against my house here, which also gives some um, extra heat and extra protection, just maybe a little bit of extra um, warmth coming from the house too. Uh, so that's something to consider. It works perfectly going right up against your house and you'll probably have electricity to be able to um, set up your heat lamp as well there too. So, um, And this is a south facing uh, side of our house. So you want it to be on a south facing side, facing to where the sun is shining and moving. Um, you just have to remember, I come out in the mornings, I have my my little routine of what I do. I have my chicken chores to do right now. We have a bunch of baby chicks and we have our meat birds. So in the morning I go out and do that. And then I will make sure to crack this open depending on how hot it's gonna be that day. Um, just check things over and then I'll head to the greenhouse um, and go make sure all those plants are doing good and I'll take their covers off in the mornings. And then, like today is a beautiful day. So this can just be wide open the rest of the day and this this will be fine. Um, and these, everything I have in here right now is very cold hardy things. I don't have any of my warm weather stuff in here right now. They're all in the greenhouse, but I have a bunch of broccoli and cabbage and like Swiss chard and they got a really late start. <laughs> I've had, I had a few accidents here. <laughs> in the very beginning when I brought everything out here, um, I brought out my brassicas and my onions and my leeks over there. I didn't realize that this had gotten left open, um, so the, the cover was lifted up, and also the gate got left open. I had one of my little ones playing in here and I didn't realize it uh, at first, <laughs> and I forgot to close it. Um, so that first night it got it got really really cold that night and a lot of my stuff got kind of taken out and then what didn't get taken out by the frost <laughs> was um, kind of eaten by chickens my chick because the gate was left open so the chickens got in here and they just had a really great time so then I had to re reseed some stuff and I'll show you my onions the onions aren't looking very happy this is just realities of gardening. Things don't work the way you want them to sometimes, but they just really, they kind of took them down. They are regrowing, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Onions are, I mean, they're pretty resilient. You are supposed to be chopping and giving onions haircuts anyway, so, but they really did, they nipped it all the way down, so I'm not sure how well these are gonna do this year, we'll see. They didn't seem to bother the leeks too much, which is interesting, but... So yeah, we'll see how these recover. I, I'll probably try to plant them, but I'm also going to plant uh, some sets as well. And then in the back, um, here I just have a bunch of lettuces, and <laughs> this is recovering still. It got... It's, it's looking good now. It's all growing back pretty much, but that got all taken out by the chickens too <laughs> when they got in here. But um, I just have different lettuces. That's our, my lettuce that I saved from our garden last year. Uh, I made a video and I was at the end of the year last year and then showed a bunch of the seeds I was saving. And I showed the lettuce uh, mixes. It was a bunch of different lettuces, so I just saved it all together and made it as a mix. And that's what I um, planted. And so that's my saved seed from last year. And that worked out really well. So you can go back, I'll, I'll link that video below if you wanna go check that out. It's just a bunch of different seed saving stuff I did at the end of the year last year. And then uh, this is arugula that I started. It's getting there. It also got attacked by the chickens, but they're really filling in now. Um, I planted these in here maybe about a month ago um, as little seedlings. I got out here and I transplanted them all and now they are full grown and now I can definitely just harvest off the sides here and just pick around the edges and now I have some early lettuce that is ready to go and we can use that in our salads and sandwiches and wraps. So yeah, that's another cool thing about using the cold frame um, too is you could, you could even section off 
a part of this and just make it into like a raised bed. You could make this whole thing into a raised bed and not use it for your seed starting uh, and just plant directly into it, of course. Um, or you could use grow bags or pots uh, like I did here. That way you can start them early in here and then bring them out if you want to. I can bring them out to the garden or wherever I want them. And then also in the fall, you could plant a bunch of things in pots like uh, carrots and kale and spinach, all the cold hardy stuff, and then keep it in here so you could have like a later harvest on it too. Uh, so that's another cool thing about using the cold frame. So another thing I was going to say about this is um, I think it would be fine and you'd be able to reuse the plastic for at least a few years um, if you remember to take the plastic off once the heat of the summer comes. We never do that, we always just forget about it. So um, the sun is really, really intense and hot and it just, it just cooks this plastic and it just makes it all kind of fall apart and uh, disintegrate kind of. <laughs> so every year we always have to replace the pl plastic, which is fine. We have a really big roll of this stuff that we bought a long time ago and uh, so we've just been replacing it every year. But you could unscrew that top uh, wood piece that's holding the plastic together at the top and just remove the whole thing um, after you're done with it in the spring and bring it back in the fall and you'd be able to reuse it for at least a couple years I'd say. But it's not a huge deal to replace the plastic if you, like us, forget about it and let it just get kind of ruined. So yeah, that's pretty much it about the, with the cold frame. I just wanted to show you an option if you are looking to start a bunch of plants or somewhere to put your up-potted plants and you don't have a greenhouse or can't get one right now. This is a really good option. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. I did get this idea many years back before we even moved out here when we first were getting into gardening. Um, I saw this on Swedish Homestead and it was a really awesome idea. Um, and we so we decided to try it out and we've loved it. So yeah, that's about it Thank you so much for joining me today and watching and if you found this helpful at all uh, Please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below Let me know how your starts are doing. How do you start your seeds in the spring? Um, I'd just love to hear what you have going on and I appreciate you watching the video and we will see you in the next one. Take care and God bless. Thank you.